All right, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how you can get a forgivable loan if you're self-employed through the Payroll Protection Program, also known as the PPP. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. You've probably heard by now, there's a loan program offered because of the CARES Act called the PPP. When these funds are used properly, this loan is completely forgiven, which means you get to keep the money and you don't have to pay any of it back. Specifically, we're talking about using 75% of the loan amount to cover your average monthly payroll for a total of eight weeks. And the other 25% of the loan can be used to cover approved business expenses like business rent payments, utility payments, and interest on mortgage payments. How do you calculate your loan amount? How do you apply for your PPP loan? How can you pay yourself, then get the loan forgiven? I'm gonna share with you the answers you need to know and the most important things to consider about your money. If you haven't watched my video on how you can get unemployment if you're self-employed, then it's a good idea to watch that after watching this video. For many self-employed people without any employees, the PPP loan isn't a good idea because you could get more money if you apply for PUA, self-employed unemployment instead. To be clear, before you consider a PPP loan as a self-employed individual, it's a good idea to see if unemployment is going to pay you more. A PPP loan pays for eight weeks of your payroll. So if your profit each week is more than the $600 per week offered through PUA, then the PPP may be better for you than unemployment. For everyone else, if your profit each year is around $30,000 or less, then stick with unemployment because it will pay you more. Now, let's get into how you can calculate your PPP loan amount. The SBA is gonna allow your bank to give you 2.5 times your average monthly payroll. First, we need to calculate your average monthly payroll. Even though you don't technically have payroll, we still need to calculate this amount for the purpose of your PPP loan. Stay with me here because there's a little math coming your way. Your average monthly payroll includes all your business net income. This means all the money, cash, 1099s, everything you earn, minus all your business expenses, everything you pay out and write off when you do your taxes. This net profit or income is then divided by 12, and that's your average monthly payroll. Then, the SBA wants to give you a loan in the amount of 2.5 times your average monthly payroll. So this calculation is your PPP loan amount. I know that explaining math is confusing, so I'm here to offer two solutions. Number one, on your taxes, you actually have a profit or loss from business page called Schedule C. You can use your net profit right from line 31 of your Schedule C to do these calculations. Or number two, I've created a self-employed PPP loan amount calculator that does all the calculations for you. Therefore, when you're submitting your application to the bank, you can attach this spreadsheet so everyone's on the same page. This is completely free if you want to use it, uh, so feel free to sign up for one. Then make a copy you can share later when you go to the bank to apply. Moving on. How do you apply for your PPP loan? Well, initial funds ran out very fast, then Congress added more funding. So you should apply as soon as possible before funds run out again and they probably will. A couple of suggestions when applying. Find a bank that is accepting PPP applications in your local area. The big banks have been limited to the amount of funding they can process. So that opens up the opportunity to go to your local bank or credit union and get your PPP application processed faster than big banks. Also, some online banks and financial technology companies you might use like PayPal or Square also might be able to process your application. To be clear, you do have to go through a bank for this application process, and some banks right now are only working with people who were already customers. I'll include a link down below to a list of PPP loan lenders and their application requirements. The key is to be able to get someone on the phone who can answer all your calls, uh, who will call you back if you have questions, and someone who you can develop a relationship with over these next few months. This is so important because it's the bank that collects the fee from the government for processing your application. So this better be the type of bank that you feel is on your side throughout the entire process. Also, 
This is the same bank that's going to be processing your loan forgiveness in eight weeks. And you want everything to be crystal clear and have all the information up front. Which brings me to how you can pay yourself with these PPP funds and then get loan forgiveness. The SBA came out with very specific rules about the amount a self-employed person can get forgiven. Their explanation, which is a little confusing, is that eight divided by 52 of your net profit from that Schedule C we talked about earlier is the payroll amount that can be forgiven. Basically, you divide line 31 from your Schedule C by 52. Multiply that number by eight, and that's the exact number you can pay yourself and have your loan forgiven. Then any remaining loan amount can be used for business expenses like rent, utilities, mortgage interests during that same eight week period. To be clear, I get this question sometimes, the PPP money you spend has to be for payroll expenses that fit into that eight weeks starting right after you get your funds. This means you can't go back and pay yourself from earlier, nor can you pay your rent, say, a few months ahead of time. If you do anything like this, then your loan won't be forgiven. After the eight weeks are up, then you have to apply for loan forgiveness. It's not automatic. This loan can be forgiven partially or not at all if you don't spend it properly and back that up with the appropriate documentation. So let's get to the point here. Once this money is in your bank account, then you need to make at least one transfer to your personal account in the same amount you calculated earlier that will be forgiven. Actually, I recommend two transfers, one for the first month paying yourself, and then another the next month just to show that each amount was used to cover one of those two months. In my opinion, it's a very good idea to set up a new bank account online for these funds so that the accounting records are clean and clear. The government loves separate accounts for specific amounts. So your PPP money mixed in with all your other business expenses and income could be muddy when it comes to trying to get it all forgiven. I suggest setting up a high interest savings account with a bank like CIT or Discover. I have both and I'll leave a link for each of those two banks in the description. See, because once the money goes into those accounts, then you can make the transfers in the exact amounts for your payroll so that you clearly show you've paid yourself with those PPP funds. Also, you can use the other 25% of your loan amount for those other business expenses we talked about earlier, like utilities, gas, electric, water, internet, telephone. You can also use it for business rent or business mortgage loan interest. I wanna help you here so these expenses clearly show up on your Schedule C. For example, line 25 lists what you pay for the year for utilities. So that amount you're claiming better be about two months worth or eight divided by 52 from line 25 for utilities. And the same thing goes for rent from line 20. I know this stuff is confusing, but just be smart when you go to spend the money so that you can provide bank statements from those eight weeks that clearly show that you made transfers and withdrawals that precisely back up what you would normally spend over the course of two months for your business. If you have any questions about this, then my suggestion is to call and ask your loan officer at the bank where you applied about spending the money and getting it forgiven. By the way, don't let them tell you to call the SBA directly. Rather, be firm and request that they reach out on your behalf to the SBA. They're working for you here. Now, I've gotten questions about the PPP funds being deposited directly into personal accounts, like that initial deposit. And that just worries me a little bit because, of course, you could write a check or take the cash out. But like I said before, I think it's smarter to separate those funds completely so that there isn't any question in anyone's eyes how that money was spent. Also, remember, and I said it before, the loan forgiveness isn't automatic. You must apply as soon as those eight weeks are up after you've gotten your money dispersed. Your bank is going to ask for you to submit that 1040 form, that Schedule C we talked about earlier. Uh, it's the same one you provided when you did your PPP loan application. Also, they're gonna ask for evidence of you paying your business rent or mortgage interest, and same thing goes for the utility payments that you paid and covered during that period. There's also a borrower certification form or letter to send in, and they still might ask for additional documentation after that. It all depends on your bank. And by the way, these banks have 60 days to respond after you submit your request for loan forgiveness. 
So what happens if all of your loan isn't forgiven? Well, any outstanding principal balance or interest that has accrued on that unforgiven loan amount, it has to be repaid. Now, most people are getting a six-month deferral before that interest accrues, but then the total remaining amount, the principal and the interest, must be repaid within two years. There's no prepayment penalty, so if you have any funds left over that aren't forgiven, you can just give them back right away. Okay, let's recap. PPP funds are a forgivable loan program that can be used to cover your payroll for eight weeks. Also, some of the money can be used to cover other business expenses. Getting a PPP loan might be a good idea for someone who knows that they make more than they would earn from the new unemployment benefits called PUA. You can easily calculate your PPP loan amount by signing up for a copy of my free spreadsheet or using Schedule C, line 31 of your taxes. Specifically, you need to determine your average monthly payroll and multiply that number by 2.5. This is the amount of money the bank is gonna give you to spend over the course of eight weeks. You need to spend this money by paying yourself for each of those eight weeks, and you can spend the other 25% on business expenses like rent, utilities, and mortgage interest. If you already have a business banking relationship with one of the larger big banks, then you can try to apply there. However, this is a first come first serve kind of program and the PPP has already run out of money once before. Therefore, it's a good idea to take a look into applying at one of your local banks who is accepting new applications. Or you can try a credit union that's in the area or a fintech site like PayPal or Square. These banks get a commission for processing your application, so make sure you feel comfortable with the person you're working with so that you can call them, ask questions throughout the entire process, and they'll call you back. When it comes time for these loans to be forgiven, you need to apply for forgiveness with the same bank that processed your application. You're going to need to provide them with proof that you spent 75% of the money paying yourself for eight weeks worth of your net profit, and you can find your net profit on your Schedule C line 31. You're also gonna need proof of spending the rest of the money on other business expenses like rent or utilities by providing statements showing the payments you made. And that number should match up with the amounts you claim each year on the same Schedule C. Banks have 60 days to let you know if all or only part of the loan is forgiven. Then after that, you have to start paying back any remaining amount within the next six months. You have two years total to pay it all back, and that includes interest that does occur and the remaining balance of the unforgiven amount. By the way, that interest rate is 1%. Many of you are probably wondering if you can use the PPP loan then, if this health crisis is still happening, whether or not you can also apply for unemployment after. And the answer is yes. Likewise, if you're already claiming unemployment right now and you wanna go ahead and process a PPP loan, then you can go that route. However, you'll not be able to collect unemployment while using the PPP loan for those eight weeks. Still, after those eight weeks are up, you can go back on unemployment if need be. Okay, let's wind this thing down. Thanks for watching to the end. I am hearing from many of you that I need a website or blog with all this information and these videos in one place. And I really like that suggestion and I appreciate the encouragement, so I'm looking into getting one developed. If any of you have tips or suggestions for me on how to get that done, then feel free to uh, leave them in the comments and thanks. And if you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It really helps keep me going and it makes me wanna keep making these videos. I really appreciate all the encouragement and feedback I get in the comments, so thanks. If you did stay to the end, we launched a brand new private Facebook group for people who love talking money and helping others learn about finances. Feel free to join and you'll be one of the first members so you can help craft exactly what this uh, community is gonna look like moving forward. We already have about 150 members. All right, as always, I'm Rich and until next time.